It's been a while since I put together one of these project-based videos, a video where I don't focus on a single feature, but rather a collection of features to solve a larger problem. For this project, we're gonna build an interface that allows the user to select a language of their choice and this will be any language on Earth. Then select a particular item, like a vegetable from a dropdown, and return a picture of that item and a description of that item. So I can choose a different item, different picture, different description. Now the nice thing about this is, it's not just bringing back the picture and the description. Because when you see this list, it's in the language that was chosen in the first step. But if I go up and select a different language, say French, then it comes back and prompts the user to select a vegetable. But now the list is in the language of the user's choosing. Even if I pick a language that doesn't use the same type of character set that my keyboard uses, like traditional Chinese, it will still display everything in the character set of that language. So how do we put together something like this? Picking a language, being prompted to select a vegetable, picking that vegetable, and getting the picture and the description, all in the language of choice. The features we'll be using to complete this project include the use of proper Excel data tables, named ranges, the inserting of in-cell images, data validation dropdown lists, a series of functions like the translate function, the xlookup function, and the if error function, as well as a small bit of VBA macros known as event-driven macros. Now you may never build this particular project, but you might want to stick through the entire presentation because there are definitely going to be pieces of this project that will be very applicable to your world. So you pick and choose which elements will work for you. But my advice is to try to find a home for as many of these features as possible. Be sure to download the solution file along with a full list of instructions so you can either follow along with me or do this on your own. We begin with a blank Excel workbook that has one sheet that will start off by going and renaming to languages. This will hold a table that lists all the languages supported by the translate function. In the download files, there's a text file called language codes that has a list of all the languages along with their two character initials used by the translate function. So all we have to do is take this, highlight everything, control A, control C for copy, switch back to Excel, and then control V for paste. We'll do a little column resizing. And now I'd like to upgrade this plain table into a proper Excel data table. I'll hold down control and press T for table. Here's my range, I do have a header row, I'll hit OK. From the table design ribbon, we'll go to the upper left corner and rename this table from table one to languages. Now let's go down and start a second sheet. This sheet will be named vegetables, and this sheet will hold the translation lookup table. The columns of this table will be image, vegetable, description, the translated name, and the translation. Next, we go to the supplied text file in the video downloads called Vegetables, and this has a list of all the vegetable names and their descriptions. We're gonna copy paste this into that new sheet. So Control A to select all, Control C to copy. Go back to Excel, underneath the vegetable column, I'll do a Control V for paste. Let's do a little column resizing. Oh, and I just realized my text file already had the header in there, so I'm gonna get rid of this row too, that's redundant. Now underneath the image column, I'd like to place a picture of each of the vegetables. This way, when I look up the vegetable name, I can return the image or the picture of that vegetable. In those file downloads from the video description link, I have a folder full of pictures, one for each of these vegetables. Now, unfortunately, I can't drag and drop these into the spreadsheet, so I'll have to go out and insert them one at a time. So we'll go up to Insert, Pictures, Place in Cell, This Device. And now I'll browse out and pick one of those pictures. I need to do this for the remaining pictures, so I'll just fast forward through this process. To make these images a bit easier to see, I'm going to highlight those rows with the pictures and then resize them to about 170 pixels. You don't have to do that for the output to look good. I just like to do it because it looks nice here. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit and I'm gonna take these columns and change the vertical alignment to centered. Now, in order to create the translated name for each of these vegetables, we have to use the user's input. So we'll have to break away from this sheet for just a moment. Let's go down and start a third sheet. This one will be named Input. And in cells B4, C4, and D4, we're gonna add the titles Vegetable, Image, and Description. In cell B2, we'll add our prompt, and I'll place my prompt in a right-aligned fashion. In cell C2, this is where we're going to give the user the drop-down to select the preferred language. So we'll go up to Data, Data Validation, and we will allow from a list. The source of this list, we'll go back to the Languages sheet, 
and pick that first column of full language names. Hit OK, and now we have a list of languages. I'm going to set my starter language to English just so I know everything's working properly. Let's name this cell to Xlate Lang for translate language. This way, when we get into writing our formulas, we won't have to reference $C$2. We can reference Xlate Lang instead. Now we can go back to the vegetable sheet. To create the translated version of the vegetable name and the description, we're going to use Excel's translate function. Now, in order to make the references more understandable, I'm going to take this opportunity to highlight this table and then press Control T and upgrade it to a proper Excel data table. For the translated names, we'll use the translate function. The text that's to be translated will be the current row's vegetable name, comma. The source language will be the language of column B, which is English. So in double quotes, I'll use the EN abbreviation for English, comma. But what's the target language? The target language is what the user picked from the input sheet. Now, if we look back over at the input sheet, if we select the cell, it's going to have the name of the language, but we can't use the name of the language in the translate function. We have to use the code name for that selected language, and that's coming from this languages sheet. So we have to take whatever language the user picked from this column and convert it over into one of these two-letter codes from the language code column. So to do this, we have to perform a lookup. Now, one of the unfortunate things about the translate function is while you're in the process of building it and you start to build another function, it doesn't give you the predictive text list. It wants to try to help you out and think you're, you know what the code is. So you're not going to get any help for the name of the function you're starting until you get into the arguments part of that function. So I'll go ahead and manually just complete the XLOOKUP function, open parentheses, the lookup value. This will be whatever the user chose in the XLATE LANG cell, comma. Where do you want to find that language? I want to find it in the first column of my languages table, comma, and I want to return something from the second column of the languages table. Close parentheses for the XLOOKUP, close parentheses for the translate function. Let me pull my formula bar down so we can see the whole formula. So we're translating the current row's vegetable from English to the language code selected by the user using that XLOOKUP function. Next, we need to translate the description. Now, since that function is almost identical to what we just performed for the vegetable name, I'm going to highlight this function and copy it, go to the translate cell and paste it. But all I have to do is change this first argument, the source of the text, from the current row's vegetable cell to the current row's description cell. And when I hit enter, there are all my descriptions. Let me resize that column. Now it is kind of difficult to know if this is really working because we're translating from English to English and that's not really a fair test. So if we go back to the input page and we change this from English to something like German, if we go back to the vegetables page, let me zoom out a bit, we can now see the vegetable names and their descriptions translated into German. That is what we will bring back and return to the user on the input page. Let's give this table a better name. So we'll go up to table design and rename this from table two to vegetables. Just for fun, if I were to go back in here and change this to Persian, go back to the vegetable sheet, it's now all in Persian. I'll just have to trust that this is correct because I do not know how to read this. So for the moment, just so I can make sure everything's working properly, I'm going to set this back to English. So back on the input page, we need to provide a drop-down list of vegetables for the user to pick from. So underneath the word vegetable, we're going to go up to data and create a data validation drop-down list. So we'll allow from a list, the source of this list, We'll go back to the vegetable sheet. Let's move this out of the way. We're not going to pick the list of English names. We're going to pick the list of translated names. That way it will conform to the language selected by the user. I'll hit OK. If I hit the drop down, I see these in English. But if I go up to change my language to Danish, now my list is in Danish. If you look very closely, it appears that the vegetable name broccoli is the same in English and Danish. Now, I don't know if that's correct, but I find it highly unlikely. What is more likely the case is if there is no successful translation for that item, it just presents it in its original language. A better demonstration of this issue would be if I were to go up here and change this from Danish to Khmer. Notice my vegetables. Clearly that is not the way you spell spinach in this language. So I'm assuming that no translation was found for spinach. Let's go back to English just for testing purposes and we'll pick a vegetable like peppers. Now it's time to look up the image for peppers. To perform this lookup operation, we'll use Excel's XLOOKUP function. The lookup value is whatever the translated vegetable name of the user's selection was, comma. The lookup array, we go back to the vegetable sheet and select the column of translated vegetable names, comma. The return column is the image column. Close parentheses, enter, and now we have our image. 
I'd like the image to be larger, so I'll just increase the height of the cell. While I'm here, I'll vertically center the vegetable name. In fact, I'll also center it horizontally. Now for the description. The function to return the description is almost the same as the function we use to return the image. It'll be xlookup. We're going to look up the selected vegetable, comma. The lookup array will be from the list of translated vegetable names, comma. The return array will be the column of translated descriptions. Close parentheses, enter, and I'll take that and vertically center it. To test this out, we'll select a different vegetable. We get a different picture. We get a different description. Selecting another vegetable, different picture, different description. At this point, the mission has been accomplished. But if I were to put this into practical use, some flaws would start to come up. One of those being, if I have a selected vegetable and I'm seeing the image in the description for that vegetable, what happens if I choose a different language, like Croatian? Now the interface has become very confused. The translate function will not re-query the translation just because you selected a different language. The translate function only recalculates when you select another item from its target. In this case, I would have to pick another vegetable. Then it would perform the translation, which would then update the XLOOKUP to bring back the picture and the description. So what we'd really like is when the user goes up here and picks a different language, that the image and description fields are cleared, along with the vegetable field to be replaced with a prompt requesting the user to select a vegetable. To perform this clearing and prompt replacement, we're going to have to use some VBA code. Now this code has to be triggered when it detects a change in that selected language of cell C2. So this will have to utilize what's known as an event-driven macro. Now don't worry about all this coding if you're not familiar with this. I've already written all the code for you. I just need to show you where to put that code. Here is the code we need to detect a change in the language selection to then automatically update the other cells. So we'll take this code, Control A to select all, Control C to copy, go back to Excel, and right click on the input sheet and choose View Code. That's gonna take us into the Visual Basic Editor. And wherever you landed, that's where you want to do a paste, Control V. Now the only parts of this that you may need to modify, I've put notes in here, such as the cell that holds the translation language list, as well as the cell that holds the vegetable selection list. You may also need to change this XLOOKUP pointer so it knows where to get the language selection. And I put notes in here to explain all this. Let's close that window. So to test it, if I go select a different language, it resets the translate functions and then prompts the user to select a vegetable. Now we do have a problem here. If we look in this cell, the original XLOOKUP is now returning an error. And the reason for this is not obvious because this prompt is in Korean and I don't speak Korean. So let's change this back to English just for a moment and it says select a vegetable. Going back into the VBA code, that selected vegetable was replaced with a prompt. Now this prompt is just temporary, but since the words select a vegetable are not in the translation table, this results in a series of NA responses from those X lookups. So what we'll do is we'll take each of these X lookups and just wrap them inside of an if error function. And we'll just say, if this is an error, when I perform the X lookup, just display nothing. So two double quotes. Same thing for the description. We'll wrap that inside of an if error function and then display empty text. So now if we select the vegetable, like garlic, we see the picture and the description. If we change the language from English to Romanian, it now says select the vegetable. Now it's getting truncated, so to mitigate that, I'll take this cell and engage the wrap text feature. Now I just have to trust that that says select a vegetable because I do not speak Romanian. But if I select a vegetable, like spinach, I get the picture and the description. If I change the language to Turkish, now it says select a vegetable in Turkish with no image, no description. My list of vegetables are in Turkish. I'll pick one. I'll get the picture and the description. I'll change this back to English. Image and descriptions are cleared. Select the vegetable prompt kicks in. My drop-down list of vegetables is in English. Now I'm not gonna go through and demonstrate all the artistry applied to this because the artistry is very much a personal preference and indicative of the scenario you're applying it but it is nice to put a little color on this just to make it a bit more professional looking. So I pick my language. I'm asked to select a vegetable. I pick a vegetable. I get the picture and the translation. So to recap, we used proper Excel data tables to store language lookup tables and vegetable data. We used in-cell imagery to populate those tables with pictures. We created data validation dropdown lists for the user to select a particular language and vegetable. We gave those drop-down lists named ranges to make our formulas look better, and then used a combination of the translate, xlookup, and if error functions 
to perform the heavy lifting of bringing back information to the user. And to make it a bit more polished, we implemented event-driven macros to reset the cells and provide prompts when the user selects a different language. So even though you may never make this particular project, hopefully you can take away bits and pieces of these different features to solve your problems. Let me know what you think in the comments, and as always, download all of these files from the link in the video description so you can get the solution file along with all of the copy-paste lookup tables and step-by-step -step instructions to build the whole thing. Thank you so much for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.